Hey, hello, everyone. Welcome to the stock specific class here for Thursday, July the 22nd. Uh, markets are up uh, a little bit today. They had a big, uh, strong day yesterday. We'll look at the charts here in just a second to kind of see what that what that could mean. And you know, one of the things we talked about on Tuesday was um, as we were rebounding from the the big down move on Monday. Uh, was is is it just a bounce or is it and is, is it going to roll over and move lower or could we could we push higher from here? We'll take a look at that when we look at the the uh, charts. Um, one thing that does concern me a little bit is that the Russell though Russell 2000 is down uh, a pretty decent amount today. We'll look at that chart here in just a second as well. And uh, as you hear me talk about in the market updates uh, on Tuesdays, um, we look at that Russell 2000 chart a lot. Uh, to, to to as kind of a leading indicator of the market, the small caps tend to be um, tend to lead the market up, lead the market down, and when we see those divergences, it can it can um, tell us uh, about the health of the move. Um, but as far as the direction alerts here, we we've seen things, we see momentum start to, to to move back up a little bit. Uh, we went came, we've come out of the hold range and into the buy range here. We've also seen uh, sentiment. Let's skip down to sentiment here real quick first. We've seen it. Um, it was kind of in the the left side of the of the high range. It's moved a little bit more to the right side of the high range here. Not yet in the extreme range, but it's kind of moving in that direction. But the key that we want to again keep an eye on is the breadth. Um, remember, the breadth is how many stocks are participating. So as the market's rebounding back up. Is it is it back to what where it was before? I mean, right before the, the sell-off, where there were few stocks that were leading that rally, and um, and we pointed that out that hey, this is not a good a healthy sign of the of the trend when when there's only a few stocks uh, participating, and um, and we're we're kind of seeing that again here the the market's rebounding and and. Uh, the breadth indicator is kind of still stuck in that trending area. So if the market does move higher or continue to move higher, we want to see the breadth start to move with it. Um, that'll tell us that we can trust that that trend a little bit more. If it if it doesn't, then you know it's one of those things where I, I really wouldn't trust the trend. Um, I'd take more defensive measures uh, or tend to sit on the sidelines. Um, because a bigger correction is coming. Um, it, it, I, I talked about this uh, on Tuesday, where when you get these rebounds and people just get conditioned to buy the dip, buy the dip. Because why not? It always works, right? You, you know, within the uptrend, that's what happens. You get the dips, and it comes back up and goes higher. But again, what leads to those bigger sell-offs is people buy the dip, and then it doesn't come back up, and then they panic, and then the, the they don't know what to do, and that they just start selling uh, indiscriminately and so um and so that's you know now a lot of times that happens from an overbought uh, condition so those those bigger corrections that's one of the reasons why uh, i wasn't uh, very confident that uh, monday's sell off was was going to lead to a a bigger drop now it still could but um Typically, you'll you'll get all these indicators into the extreme range, and that's when you know that okay, we're in a condition here where you can get a lot of panic because everyone's overly confident. They're 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 buying everything, and eventually that they're, they're, you run out of buyers to push the price higher. And uh, but yet the feeling in the in the top is very euphoric, like it's going to last forever, and there's no way there's going to drop. There's just huge confidence, and uh, we're we're not there yet. So. Um, but we want to pay attention to those things. And again, right now, at least something this week uh, to kind of keep an eye on is that mom not momentum, the breadth. See if we're getting a healthy participation uh, in the rally. Now, I look at a lot of charts uh, during the day. I probably look at three, two to 300 charts throughout an average day. It doesn't take me very long to go through watch lists and things like that. But part of the reason why I do it, um, you now obviously there's tools. The software here is 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 designed to where you don't have to look at a lot of stocks, and it, it puts you right 
in front of the stocks that are that are that are moving right now. Um, so I'm not trying to suggest that you have to to do something like that. But one of the reasons why I keep doing it is because it gives me kind of a feel of what's going on in the market. It, it's how I recognize the breadth of the market uh, myself is I'm looking at individual charts and the indexes. We had this happen, um, uh, I want to say last week, where um, the indexes were up. They were up a pretty decent amount. And I was going through my watch list and I saw just terrible charts, and bearish looking charts, or, or at least charts that didn't look very bullish. And um, there were a few, but it told me that there's a few stocks that are that are causing this this index to look strong, and um, and so it, and 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 the way I kind of am able to kind of feel that or see that is by looking at a lot of charts, being able to kind of see what's actually going on uh, behind the scenes, so to speak, and and, um, and that's that's been one thing that's that's. Uh, that stood out uh, recently is just there hasn't been a lot of participation, a lot of breadth. So we'll keep an eye on that this week and see if that uh, if that kind of starts moving higher there. Um, we also see in the buy sell ratios uh, a lot of you see the real sharp drop right here in the sales, a slight uptick in the buys. What this is telling me is that there's a lot of stocks that have just kind of gone from sell to hold. Um, and now that's a good sign that you know it's typically what happens when you get a big sell off is they got to go from sell to to hold to buy um but we'd want to see if the market keeps rolling up we want to see this start to have a sharper uptick as more stocks are then going from hold to um to buy um and then sentiment is is again it's pulled back quite a bit it's starting to move back towards that that red line again, but we're not there yet. Um, as far as individual charts here, real quick, you can see we're up today, but kind of just barely up. There's the S&P. We had uh, here's the big rebound day on Tuesday that we talked about. Now, uh, one of the things I, I mentioned is that uh, when you have the, a big sell-off like this. Um, one of the things that can be a signal that there's further to drop is that you you kind of rally up. You have a weak rally back up, usually on very low volume, and it gets kind of stagnant or choppy. You know, so you're stair stepping up, and you get a sharp move down. What you want to pay attention to is what happens after that sharp move down. If if it tries to rally back up, but it's kind of more stagnant or sideways that's usually a sign that uh, that's a step on the downward stair step and you're usually going to have an impulsive move down as you kind of alternate between impulsive and corrective. Um, in this case, we pretty much, with the exception of today, the last two days have been kind of sharply up. So it it might just be that this is just a another dip. We saw it happen back here. It It, 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 it dipped. Had two strong days. It paused for a day. Actually, was down a little bit, and and then kind of kept grinding higher. We could see the same thing happening uh, right here. It doesn't look, as of right now, it doesn't look like it's just going to roll over and, and drop. Um, uh, but uh, it could. It, and, and this is part of the problem of not having deeper corrections. Is it could be that we we do break out, but it it'll start to be more stagnant. Kind of like what happened back here where we broke out, but then we just kind of moved a little bit more sideways. It had just very, it almost felt like we weren't going anywhere um, where we were, you know, we had up days, but they were, they just weren't real, real strong. And we could kind of see the same thing. The, the, the reason why these are jumping up from these, these sharp sell-offs is because the buyers are waiting for those, those discounts. They're waiting for those lower prices you know, if you think about it like a like a retail store, you know, where the, the shoppers are only coming in when you're when you're having the sale, and when you don't have the sale, they're not coming in. Um, well, th th that's what's happening here is that you have the drop. People are anxious to buy because there's the dip, but when as you break out to new highs, they're they're not there's not a lot of excitement to buy right there, um, and so you tend to stagnate or move a little bit more sideways. You just aren't able. But that's telling you that there's there's not enough buyers 
out there. And now that can change. Uh, or I shouldn't say not enough buyers, but not enough buying um, um, excitement, I guess, or or confidence, or you know, there. Now that can change. You can get a news item that comes out that that makes people believe that prices are really likely to go high over the next uh, few months, and then they can they they run out and start buying right now. Um, but it could be that you're going to need a bigger drop uh, to to get a more sustained uh, rally, or and 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 so that's kind of where we're at right now. It, we could kind of go either way from from this this area right here, but I don't expect to to see a breakout and go um, too much higher, at least in a real strong way. I think I think uh, I think we're we're just showing so many signs of a top right now that we need that bigger bigger correction. So every time we start selling off, I keep hoping that there's a bigger bigger sell off because then I can get a lot more excited, a lot more bullish. Um, with wanting to jump back in myself. The Dow, um, again, is kind of flat today, but had a couple good, decent days. I'm going to skip over. Well, NASDAQ 100 is another decent update. It's not as flat today. Um, a lot of those FANG stocks are, are performing pretty well today. Uh, but the Russell, Russell 2000 is down over 1%. And it's really lagging. And, and now it did have some of the stronger move, rebound move uh, the last couple of days. By percentage basis, it was up a higher percent than the other indexes. But the fact that it's down uh, today, it's telling me that those those uh, small cap stocks are are struggling. Um, now again, the reason why that's significant is because when when fund managers are confident that the market is going higher they'll get into the smaller stocks because there's a bigger return there but they're riskier companies a lot of these companies could go out of business pretty quick um when they get a little bit scared or if they when they become less confident the market can move higher they sit they tend to go into uh the next step is they, they get out of the small cap stocks and they get into companies that aren't going to disappear. Boeing's not going to disappear overnight or uh, Goldman Sachs or, uh, you know, Walmart or whatever. They, they get into these companies that that they know are going to be around. Um, doesn't mean they can't go down, but they're going to be around and they, they tend to take less risk uh, or get out of the riskier companies. And that can show up on the, that's why we look at the Russell 2000 index is to, to kind of see if we can see that pattern starting. And again, one day doesn't, make a pattern but um that's something to keep an eye on that they're the, the small caps are lagging today another thing uh, and i don't want to make this a full market update but um if we look at uh keep an eye on the vix because we the vix is 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 um moving a little bit higher today so the S&P 500 is up and the VIX is up um, just slightly, but it's a, a little bit of an indication that, that uh, again, those, those professional traders are, are hedging a little bit. Um, they're also buying, but they're hedging a little bit uh, with, with some of those. It just shows that they're, they're not fully trusting the rally. And, and that's apparent in almost anyone that's analyzing the market right now, they, they can tell you that there's there's uh, not full confidence that the, the market's going higher. The Monday sell-off did shake a lot of people and not scare them uh, necessarily, but um, it, I would say that caused them to become a little bit more concerned about the rally and, and that's kind of showing up a little bit um, on the VIX. Although the VIX did pull back quite a bit over the last couple of days after that big spike up on, on Monday. It did drop a, a pretty decent amount there. All right, um, so the bottom line as far as that quick analysis of the market conditions is that um, you know we're, we can still be bullish on the market, we just wanna be cautiously bullish. So, um, you know, usually in these conditions, I'd, I'd, I'd wanna be, although we're gonna go through a few stocks, my job today is to go over, you know, stocks that, that I think look pretty good and, and uh, but, but I mean, everyone needs to understand the conditions because I'm not saying to jump into every one of these or or really expand your portfolio in these conditions. We want to be a little bit more selective, um, a little more cautious. 
Um, uh, but uh, you know, it, some of these might fit your some of these stocks might fit your um, investment goals a little bit more than others, and and you can decide for yourself um, which ones you'd, you'd want to take advantage of. Under the retail sector here. Uh, there's a couple of uh, new new ones, ones we haven't covered over the last couple of weeks. Uh, Dillard's right here, DDS, 98 strength rank. Now let's switch this over to signals. And I I like I just like the, the you know this is we've got the higher highs higher lows. We just rebound we went from a sell back to a, a hold right here. So we've been acting like an uptrend. We have this little consolidation right through here. Now, something I've told you before on these sideways consolidations is that, is that that's a reflection of indecision. The buyers aren't overly confident things are going to go higher. Sellers aren't uh, aren't uh, worried about things uh, uh, going lower or aren't confident it's going to go lower, and you get kind of stuck in this range. Um, sometimes to break out of that range, you need a uh, you need something to kind of stimulate the buying or or the selling and and sometimes what you'll see is that you'll see a drop out of that sideways range and then it'll rebound right back up it drops people think that the sellers are taking control but actually what it's done is it's brought the price down to a level where the buyers are going to be a little more confident to get in and then they start buying and it drives it back up you kind of see that that's kind of happened right here you have that monday sell-off right here but then they immediately came back in out of that sideways range. Now, you could, we haven't gone back to a buy signal yet. That's the, the, the um, usually the, the, the entry signal to get in. But you could, because we have this, we're, we're near the top of the sideways range, you could wait for it to break out of that range as, as additional confirmation. Um, and again, as a rule of thumb, if it can break out of that range, you can use the top of this range and the bottom of the range, project that distance upward as kind of a minimum target of, of uh, how far you expect it to go if it, if it breaks out. But I like this one right here, and it's, it's up a pretty decent, it's, it's holding pretty well today. It's doing okay today. The last couple of days have been pretty strong. Uh, and then another one in the retail sector was this uh, BBQ. Barbecue Holdings, it looks like, a 96 strength rank. And again, I'm looking at the potential of this being a, a kind of an ABC correction right here. The key is that that previous low right there holds is a higher low. Um, you know, here you had a nice little consolidation right through here. So you had a, you had a run up right here. You had Wave A, wave B, wave C on the pullback, broke out, barely broke out, then kind of moved sideways, consolidated, then broke out again, and it's kind of dipped back down here. Now, could this be in a trend reversal, and you're going to start seeing lower highs, lower lows? Yeah, it's always possible. I mean, I talk about this all the time, but an ABC pattern, you know, it, it, it looks like you know, when you when you see these ABC patterns, you're expecting that at the end of that wave C, it's going to go higher. But uh, downtrends, when downtrends are in place, sometimes they look like an ABC pattern. You get the lower high, lower low. Looks like it could start to move back up, and then it rolls over and drops. You, you're, you're now you're recognizing lower highs, lower lows. You're acting like a downtrend at that point. So um, that's that could be what's happening here. Hopefully, by the time this goes back to a buy signal, though, it will get above this high right here. Because if you're looking at this as being a lower high, lower low. But it's also potentially that, that bullish ABC pattern. If they can get back above this level right here, um, it's much more likely that that's an ABC pattern. The thing is going to go higher. And let's see, we're a little ways away from getting, getting back to that buy signal. We're kind of in the middle of the hold range right there. All right, then uh, computer and technology sector. Let 
this to load in here. It's taking its time here. I like this uh, ZDGE right here, 99 strength rank. And again, it's it's because this looks like an ABC correction right into here. This breakout move right here broke out. Looks like it's kind of wave A, wave B, wave C. Probably about a 382 retracement of this move up. Not quite a 50% retracement, but but it looks like it's right in that retrace start at the end at the beginning of that retracement zone. Again wait for it to go back to a buy signals confirmation or you could wait for it to break out that range there is confirmation depending on what what you're looking for there that looks like a pretty nice pattern there also under computer and technology uh, i think this is one we've we've gone over recently is avid in fact i think i went over this on tuesday <clears throat> now this could be this is kind of wave a wave b wave c this is kind of the pullback it's kind of a down day to day though um the other possibility is that this is the peak right here this is the start of the move down maybe this is wave a wave b and we get wave c where you come down a little bit a little bit lower there since we're waiting for this to go back to a buy signal anyway again wait for that confirmation anyway um you know you can you're you don't really care what it does in the near term because uh, if it drops, no harm, no foul. You're not in the in the trade to begin with. If it can work its way back up to a buy signal, it's it's probably much more likely that this is a correction and this thing is, is moving higher at that point. And then another one that I've, uh, on computer technology we've talked about already is that if, uh, a few times, last few updates is this uh, GSAT, Global Star, 95 strength rank. And we're down a little bit today, but we're still kind of keeping an eye to see if that holds as a higher low right there, had the higher high. This is a possible bullish ABC pattern right here. Again, if this thing can cannot go to below this low, and get back to that buy signal. It's probably a little ways away from that buy signal. Yeah, see we're over here on the left side of that hold range. But if it can get to that buy signal without dropping to a lower low, I think this could be, because again, you're looking at, it was acting like a downtrend through here. It looks like it's starting to roll over and start to move back up again. And you're trying to see if you can't get that confirmation early that you could that you have that possibility of reversing back into an uptrend. Those are always the the, the best trades. The ones that end up producing the most uh, return for me, at least, is when I find these these stocks that have been beaten up that look like they're you, you can recognize that they look like they're in the early stages of an uptrend. Now, obviously, not able to do that. But you don't need very many of them to do that. You know, if I, if I, uh, for instance, if I got in this trade on the on a buy signal and then I put a stop down here where I thought it, if that went below there, it's it's gone to a lower low. It, it's no longer acting like an uptrend. I'm not risking very much, and if it gets all the way back up to this previous high, which if it is going back into an uptrend, it probably should get back up there. My reward when I'm making is far more than what I lose. I only need to be right, you know, 30% of the time, and I can make more money than I lose, which is the whole goal anyway. Uh, industrial products. I've brought this one up before and it hasn't gone back to a buy signal yet. So we're just kind of, it's still kind of in its corrective phase, but Alcoa right here, 91 strength rank, kind of down the list a little bit here, but now this one, if you zoom out to a, like a one year chart, you can see the, the reason why I keep bringing this one up here is that, uh, you know, you had this little big correction right through here and nice little run up 
looks like wave A, wave B, wave C, this big run up right here, and it looks like this is this kind of more choppy. This how it's more kind of chop, more choppy, more sideways. It looks like it's kind of in a corrective phase. It's starting to move back up again. Now, first time I pointed this out was right in here, where this looked like wave A, wave B, wave C. It looked like it was starting to go up. We never got to the buy, got the buy signal confirmation though, and it's kind of worked its way back down. But now you have kind of a double bottom right here. Again, I would wait for this to get back to a buy signal first, but it it just looks like it's in a larger correction, which should lead to a larger move up when it breaks out or when it's done correcting. And that's why I kind of keep bringing this one up, at least from this sector. And then under business services, I like this uh, Futu Holdings right here, um, 96 strength rank. On here, just a second. So I wanted to zoom back, uh, zoom out because this is this is a. Uh, a little bit more context here. So you had this big run up. It's been moving kind of more sideways through here. So it looks like it's in a large, just a gigantic corrective phase. You had a little bit of a double bottom right here. You also had kind of a double top right here where it kind of pulled back again. But it's possible this could be putting in a higher low. Again, you'd want to wait for this to go back to a buy signal. And you could even wait to see if it breaks out above here as extra confirmation. But it's you know you had if you notice on the way down you had this you had this little higher low right here and then went to a lower low rallied up had kind of a even low right here and maybe this is the higher low right here and this one I, I I'm not sure what they do I, I know some of these stocks in the business services that we've looked at recently have had a tie in to Bitcoin. Um, stocks like Riot and Mara, M-A-R-A. Um, I think this one uh, might have a, a relationship with Bitcoin. So the reason why I'm pointing that out is it might, if it if it does, it might move as Bitcoin moves. If that's what uh, Riot and Mara do. If if Bitcoin goes up, they tend to go up. If Bitcoin trades down, they tend to go down. Um, I could be wrong on that though. I. I I'm definitely not the person uh, that you want to talk to to to, to get the the fundamental fundamentals of a company or or what a company does. I I told you I I look at about you know three to four two to three hundred stocks a day or more. Um, that means I'm putting most of my time in what the chart is looking like and not what uh, the fundamentals are or what the company does. Um, because my focus is it doesn't matter <laughs> uh, whatever the chart is telling me um, that's that's what I want to pay attention to um, but um, but you know sometimes I'll, I'll kind of do a little bit of research on some companies because uh, if the chart looks good and you know the industry is is growing or it's in an area that's really taken off um, you know it helps you be a little bit more confident in your in your chart decision sometimes all right, uh, real quick, I want to do a, um, you know, we we tend to kind of follow the same pattern a lot of times uh, each each week, and I I, don't, I kind of like to get off of that sometimes to, to where we do something a little bit different. Um, I want to jump in because this is a stock-specific class. Let's jump in and look at, at some of the um, muscle stocks um, just to see if there's any in those in those scans as well that, that um, look like good trades. And Anytime I, we see a, a pullback in the market, a, a decent pullback in the market, which we saw on Monday, I like to go in and look uh, through the reversal app. Um, now, I've done some training on the reversal app in the past. Um, you can, you can uh, look for, for those recordings. Um, but to switch over to the reversal app, um, you're going to you're going to click on this little button right here. Now it's very important that 
you recognize what this button here, if you're going to switch it over, because it's the way you switch back as well. And you have to switch it back. It doesn't automatically, even if you log out, it doesn't automatically switch it back to to the regular page. So um, just be aware of that. Um, we're going to switch it to, it'll turn blue right here. That tells us we're in the reversal app. And what I'd like to look for are the, uh, I want to go into the muscle stock tab right here. And I like to look under look for these ABC patterns. Now, ABC patterns show up in different different contexts. Um, a lot of the ABC patterns we're looking at uh, in the in the trend following app is is are there they're within the trend. They're the smaller ones within the trend. So you're you're getting wave A, wave B, wave C, move wave A, wave B, wave C. But as you remember, when I taught you Elliott Wave a few months ago, um, the way stocks move is they move in kind of a fractal way, which means that these smaller stair steps right here are creating bigger stair steps. So you have this this big move up right here, and then you'll get a you'll get what'll be a downtrend in the stock, but what it'll be creating is a larger ABC pattern. So. Where this ABC pattern was retracing 50% of this move, this this ABC pattern was retracing 50% of this move. Now you get the, the larger trend and you get a larger pullback. This larger ABC pattern is now kind of correcting this entire move up right here. And the reverse lap is trying to help you find some of these stocks that could be having these bigger pullbacks, that could be completing these bigger pullbacks. Now, Usually when you're in a strong uptrend for several months, you're not going to get a lot of these stocks that have these big pullbacks. Um, or you probably don't want to trade a whole lot of them because why aren't they participating in the in the rest of the trend, uh, the, 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 you know, the rest of the market? Um, but when you when the whole market sells off, obviously stocks, good companies sell off with it and they tend to have these bigger pullbacks sometimes. And and so I, I tend, whenever we have a sell-off like we did on Monday, I tend to look to see if there's any that I like that might have might have these larger pullbacks. And you can go through some of these scans to look for them. For instance, under the muscle stock uh, scan right here, I like this uh, HYRE. It's a 97 strength rank. And so you can see that, um, you know, you've had, and this big run up right here, this looks like wave A, wave B, wave C, of a correction. It looks like it's retraced about 50% of that move up right here, about halfway, maybe a little bit, yeah, looks like about halfway. But it looks like it's hit that retracement zone. It's getting a green buy signal here, and the buy signal is not exact on this. It's just kind of telling you the area where you, it would expect to move higher from, if, if that is an ABC pattern. Um, I, I don't like to go off of just the buy signal on when I'm in this app. I want to I want to see the ABC pat what, what what looks like the ABC pattern and the larger trend, and then you know you'll see the if you start seeing that buy signal in that. Um, with that ABC pattern, it's a little bit more reliable that way. And then the, another one that I liked was in the um, uh, power plays. So go back to the muscle stock tab. Let's go under power plays right here. And uh, this MDTR, Matador Resource Company. 92 strength ranks. So the now the strength ranks aren't as important in this. Uh, although I'd like to have them be you know close to the, the 90 range. But remember, these stocks are usually having these deeper pullbacks, so their strength rank might uh, drop a little bit in the process. But again, here it looks like you had here you had this big run up. You had this ABC pattern right through here. Again, the buy signal. Kind of came in near the end of where the the algorithm is kind of trying to judge where it, it, it assumes the end of that correction could be. Um, had this big run up right through here, and then it looks like wave A, wave B, wave C. 
Again, with any ABC pattern, typically your ABC pattern will complete where wave C is about the same length as wave A, and that's something you look for. Uh, let me use a highlighter here on that. So wave C actually is a little bit longer than wave A, but it looks like it kind of fits that, that, that uh, context there, and it's kind of started to move up. But, but this is where, again, the buy signal isn't precise. It, it started to give a buy signal right through here. It wasn't done with that potential C leg. Um, now it's starting to move back up here, but I like I like the context of that. That pullback kind of it pulled back to the last breakout area. Here's the last breakout area. This this looks like it's pulled back to that last breakout area. It could be starting to move back up again. So those are just a couple that. Um, uh, that I that I kind of noticed uh, from those scans. Uh, let's go ahead and switch back right here. Click that button again to switch back to the other platform. All right. Now I was thinking today about what to do for training topic. Um, actually, I was thinking about it yesterday. And. Um, I wanted to talk a little bit about um, uh, trading psychology. Now, there's really not going to be a lot visually here, so I'll just put a chart up. Uh, you know, a lot of, a lot of right now, it's just going to be me talking. But um, uh, one of the usually one of the last um, challenges to overcome as a, for traders is to First, you kind of have to learn how to read a chart, or if you're a fundamental trader, you got to learn how to read the fundamentals. Um, you got to learn how to manage your trade, you know, how to get into it, how to get out of it. You got to learn to manage risk, how much money you're putting into the trade. But a lot of times, the final thing to overcome is is the emotions, and and um, you know, we always hear that. Uh, that the market is driven by the emotions of fear and greed, and fear and greed are very strong emotions. And um, and because we don't know what's going to happen, ultimately with the, the stocks that we're getting into, um, you know, we can react to pretty strongly to those emotions of fear and greed. And they're usually the root cause of why we lose money and why we make mistakes. Um, I've been I've been uh, consulting traders for 20 years now, and and um, the, the 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 biggest problem that that every trader I've had to work with the, the biggest problem has always been related to um, to um, managing risk. Or managing the tra having a trading plan, having a plan for their trade, um, and it seems like it's real simple, and it is. It's really kind of basic and simple, but that that's usually the main problem uh, of of why we're losing money. It's not that usually it's not the wrong stocks. Um, I think that the expectation. Of stock of of uh, each stock you're finding is is can be a problem because if you're expecting every trade that they're expecting every trade that I got over today just because I've been doing this for a long time just if you're expecting every one of these to work out that's the problem it's not it's not the stock picks today it's it's the expectation that that they have to work out and I give you reasons why I think they're going to work out. Um, but not all of them are going to work out. And the sooner you accept that uh, about the market, and I think the, the better you're, you're – well, being able to accept it is, is going to cause you to then focus on the things you need to focus on. Because um, the problem is if you're, if you're expecting that there's something out there that can tell you exactly what a stock is going to do, I, I know exactly what your, your trading life is going to be like. You're going to go from program to program – guru to guru some of you have probably already done it you probably spent thousands of dollars and and you've had a it's like the guru of the month you know you follow this guy's program and this guy's program and this guy's program 
And the reason why you're doing that is because you're looking for the guru that knows exactly what the market's going to do. You know, you got to just find the right guru or the right software or the, the, you know, whatever it is that you're, you're focused on. The problem though is the expectation that you can know exactly what the stock is going to do. So the sooner you dismiss that expectation, the sooner you can get to work on the root problem and get it fixed. Now I could spend hours going over different areas of trading psychology and I may do different trading from time to time as I, as I, uh, is is I feel a need to to address something, but uh, what I want to focus on today is a real basic um, concept, and you hear it all the time from traders that it, you want to treat your trading like a business. <clears throat> now, those of you that are business owners out there or have run a business in the past, this is going to make a lot of sense to you because you have that you have that actual experience. Uh, for those who've never run a business before. You still can understand, you should still be able to understand the concepts, uh, but you may not have the, the deep um, um, understanding that, a, that a, a, someone that's gone through the day-to-day -day process of running a business would, would, would understand. But um, we hear it all the time, though. You treat, treat the stock market or treat your trading like a business. And, but not too many people then go on to explain exactly how you do that or what that means. And what we need to get to, and this this ties into your trading plan and your you know entry points, stop losses, all this other stuff that we've gone over before. Um, basically, it, it, when I'm talking about t treating your your trading business or trading like a business. I'm talking about the expectation or, or managing revenue and expenses. The bottom line with any business is that's what you're trying to do is you're trying to bring more money in than you're, than you're spending, right? More money, more revenue than expenses. But every business owner fully understands that you're going to have expenses. Can you imagine, um, can you imagine a, a guy that runs a restaurant, for instance? has a really big uh, high sales day, a lot of people he's, he's fed that day, and um, you know he's had tons of money come in. You know, maybe he made, um, um, I don't know, let's say $10,000, that's a little bit of a smaller business then I guess, but made $10,000 in, in revenue that day uh, feeding all these people. And he's really excited about that. That's, that's a great amount of money to make in one day. But now his shelves are empty and he's got to put in a food order to replace the chicken and the, um, the salads and whatever else he's selling, uh, the, the burgers or whatever. And he writes out this, this uh, uh, order and it ends up that he's got to write a check for $5,000 to his suppliers to bring in all this food for the next morning. So he can run a business. Now, if you've been in that situation as a business owner and you're writing out that check, do you suddenly sit back in your chair and get depressed and say, I can't believe, I can't believe I'm losing all this money. I had $10,000 and and now I'm, I'm losing half of it. I'm losing $5,000 and you're so depressed. You can't sleep that night. You're so upset that, uh, you know, you, you yell at your kids or something like that. No, you're not feeling that way. You understand that, that that's how your business runs. You've got to resupply the, the food so that you can sell another $10,000 worth of food the next day, right? What you're concerned with is, okay, after I write that check, that means that What's left over is $5,000. That's what I get to go deposit my bank account. That's what you're focused on. Now, obviously, I, I'm not saying that it's this simple or that you ha don't have to do anything else than that. Um, what happens if, uh, you know, you, you, you didn't have as many customers come in 
and uh, so you only brought in uh, eight thousand dollars in in revenue and, and and sales that day, and because you were expecting all these other customers, you had to throw out uh, a bunch of food, so you still had to you still had to spend five thousand dollars to your suppliers. Now you only have a three thousand dollar profit that you're depositing in your bank account. Is that a problem? Well, it could be. You know, obviously, in, the, in a business like the food business, you're 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 going to have ups and downs and uh, busier times of the year than others. Um, but that's what you're focused on, right? You're saying, "Oh, I made three thousand dollars less." What if that goes down to, you know, you have uh, six thousand in sales and still have the five thousand in and and I'm, it's not just the food too. You've got to have the employees that you're hiring to to run the place. You know, you, they're not going to work for free. You're not expecting to work for free. Um, but now you only have a thousand dollar deposit into your bank account. Well, what's what's going? Well, first of all, now you recognize there could be a problem, right? Now, how do you address the problem? Well, you're gonna. Your problem is either you're you're not bringing enough revenue. Your your revenues come down, not enough customers, or your expenses have gone up, or a combination of both. In this case, we've kind of just focused on revenue dropping. So the next thing. So obviously, you understand that scenario. Let's tie it into the the trading. So, in trading. Your winning trades are your revenue. Your losing trades are your your um, expenses. Um, and the key point here is, just like that business owner is not going to get depressed writing the check for those expenses, you can't get depressed over having a losing trade because you're going to have them. You're going to have these costs if you're going to run a, a sandwich shop. You're going to have losing trades if you're going to run a trading business. And that's okay. That's part of the process. So if your expectation is you're not going to have those expenses, that's the problem. Now, just like in the the business, we've got to manage that business. Meaning that if I'm not making money in my trading this month, I got to know why I, I didn't make money in the trading. And the problem is going to be either I didn't have enough uh, winning trades, or or maybe I had. Uh, more losing trades, or more importantly, the money I brought in from my winning trades was not as much as I was losing on my losing trades. Now, why? You got to ask the question why, just like you did in that that other business. You need to understand what's going on. Um, it could be that uh, um, you know the, it had a big market sell-off that came out of nowhere. Um, in that case. If you had all bullish trades and then and then last Friday and then Monday happened, there's a good reason why you didn't make money this week. Uh, if you had all bullish trades, you got wiped out on that move. Okay, again, it could just be it. A, it, it, it may not be a major problem yet. Okay, um, if we rally back up. You know, you could and you're continuing to, to trade your system. You should be able to overcome that, and and uh, next week you should be able to bring in more money than you're than you're losing. Usually, the problem though in trading it run, that run that you run into is the fact that um, you don't have a trading plan to begin with. You got into your trade, expect that stock to go up. You decided you're going to get out when you know it's time to get out. Uh, when, when is that? Well, you don't have a plan, so you don't. It's just going to be a feel of when I, when I, when I'm losing too much money, I'll get out, and then that's when you end up with these these big losses, and the, the losses are more than what you're bringing in. Um, part of when we are going over the um, risk management um, a couple weeks ago, or is might have been last week. We said, you know, one of the few things you can control in your trading is your position size and your stop loss. Um, but this is where our focus needs to be. It needs to be on 
on managing that process, making sure we have a trading plan and making sure we execute that trading plan and then adjust it. You know, where is the problem? Is the problem, uh, you know, maybe the problem is that, that it, maybe the problem is that the, the market is trending down and I'm still buying, buying stocks. So I'm going against the trend. Um, you know, one of the things I talked about recently is sometimes, and this takes a little bit more experience, but it, it, it you know, sometimes you're in a situation where um, the condition, the market conditions aren't the greatest. You know, um, there's there's not a high probability that the market's going to go higher, but there's not yet a reason to to sell or short the market or anything like that. And you're kind of in this state of limbo. And if you over trade in that condition and try to do too much in that condition, that could be part of the problem. If the condition isn't isn't ideal, uh, or if you fail to recognize that you're getting topping signals in the market. You know, we were talking about the market possibly pulling back before we got that Monday pullback. Um, you know, we we didn't know for sure it was going to happen. We don't know exactly what it was going to happen. But one of the things I talked about last week was lightening up on trades, not not having too many trades, maybe even going to cash on a, on on uh, your positions to because we're in a, a a topping state there. So part of the problem could be over trading in the in the wrong conditions. But the bottom line is I, I, I just want you to develop that mindset um, of a business owner. And to try when you do this and when you focus on the plan, then the losses from your trades don't affect you. Um, and, and again, this gets back to that risk management. If you get that amount of the loss down to a level that doesn't freak you out. Um, you know, if maybe that, that level is $500 or whatever, maybe it's less than that. But then you don't get upset uh, about the loss because the dollar amount isn't too high. Um, usually you don't get overly ecstatic about the gains because in order to get that risk down to a level you can accept, your gains aren't going to be that much, much greater. Let me give you an example of that. Let's say, um, let's say on a trade, that, let's just take like a two to one uh, reward to risk. Let's say on this trade that if I'm wrong, I'm going to lose $5,000. If I'm right, I'm going to make $10,000. Now, obviously, what's your first thought usually going to be? Man, that looks so good. That if I could, if I could have a trade where I made ten thousand dollars, that's going to be the greatest. Why is that always going to be your first thought? Again, getting into the trading psychology. I talked about this uh, last week or a couple weeks ago. I can't remember when it was, but I, I said every trade you get into, you believe is going to work out, or you would never get in the trade, right? Every trade you get into, for some reason, you believe is going to work out. The reason could be very well thought out. You've analyzed the chart, the you know, or it could be that you heard a hot stock tip on the subway and and you have no idea who this this guy is, but he's he's got to know what he's talking about. Whatever the reason is, you believe that trade is going to work out. So the tendency is to always focus on the the potential gain. But how does a business owner approach it? Well, he knows that he's going to have expenses. He knows that not all of the trades are going to work out. And boy, if he had the five thousand dollar loss, that's going to devastate. Him. Okay, we'll get it down to a level that you can you can handle. Let's say your risk, your loss on the trade is going to be five hundred dollars, and you're like, okay, I can handle that. And again, it might be lower than that. I don't know where everyone's level is. You got to find your level, at your starting point. Now, I promise you that'll that'll go up. Because as you get confidence in your system, you know, you know, just like that sandwich shop owner, you know that you're going to get, you know, ten thousand dollars worth of customers coming in the, uh, that day, and you're going to spend five thousand in, in replenishing the the inventory and paying the the employees. You know that you're not you're not worried about you, you're not going to be too worried about that expenses. You're not you're, that expense. 
okay? You're going to get used to that expense. In fact, when your business grows and now you have uh, $20,000 in sales for the day, you're going to have to spend $10,000 in, in to, to uh, replenish the inventory and pay the employees. You don't care, right? Because your system is making you more money and, and you're able to handle that bigger check, that $10,000 check that you have to write because you know the revenue is going to be there. The winning trades are going to be there. So if we keep that, that same two to one ratio here, now when you're right, you're only going to make $1,000. That's still good, right? You're making twice as much as when you're, you're making twice as much when you're right and you're losing when you're wrong, right? But notice what that did. By, by bringing that risk amount down to a level that you can handle, look what it did to managing those emotions of fear and greed. You're no longer going to be depressed on the loss because you got it down to a level where you're not going to be depressed on the loss. But you're also not going to be overly ecstatic about the gain. It's only a thousand dollar gain. Boy, if I would have taken the bigger risk, it would have been ten thousand dollars. It's only a thousand dollars. You've handled both of those. You've you've, you've uh, boxed in both of those emotions: the, the the greed and the fear. Okay. Like I said, this is the this is kind of the final stage of what people have to work on. So if you're a little ways away from dealing with this stuff, uh, focus on your your trading plan, your risk management. You know, what is your what is your plan for your trade? Set set up your business first, and then we'll worry about uh, um, you know getting the emotional side taken care of. But this is something I, I want to get it in there to, to make sure you understand. And again, this is not something that a lot of people talk about or teach you. This is usually stuff you have to learn on your own. Um, and especially because everybody has different starting points. Everybody has a different level of, of risk that they can handle. But if you're not enjoying your, your trading, if, if, if you're just devastated by your, your losses and and or that you're getting so excited about your gains. That's another clue that you're probably not running your training business properly is if you had a, if, if you made, you know, $10,000 on a winning trade and you're bragging everybody about how much you made and you're, you're so excited about that, but if you had the potential of that $5,000 loss, that's why you had the potential for that big $10,000 gain. That could be a signal that uh, if you're getting overly ecstatic about your your wins, it it could be a it could it could tell you that you you you've got a a psychological problem to deal with, um, or you potentially have that. I'm not saying that you can't get lucky on a trade where you were risking $500 and it had a huge move more than you're expecting and it ended up being a $5,000 gain or something like that. I'm not talking about that. I could be I I have had those trades and I. I do get a little ecstatic on those, but I also understand that that's, that's abnormal. It's not part of the normal move that I got lucky on a, you know, an earning announcement or something, or some analyst decided to upgrade the stock and it jumped to, uh, you know, 30% for the day or something like that. Um, but I promise you, if you, if you start to focus on treating it like a business and treating it like a routine like that, um, you're, you're likely to make more money. Um, again, I, I didn't say you're going to make more money because it, you could run into issues. There could be some issues, other issues you have to deal with. Maybe you're, you're not finding the right trades or you're trying to, 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 to do, uh, you're trying to pick tops or bottoms and do counter trend trades instead of doing trend trades, you know? Um, but even at that, this will keep you from wiping out your account before you realize those problems. Um, you you want to make it difficult for, the way you, stay, you, you make money in the market is to be able to stay in the market. If you wipe out your account, you can't stay in the market, which means you're not going to make, make money in the market, you know. Um, your focus has to be on trying to do whatever you can to stay in the market as long as possible, or, or well, forever. That's the ideal 
be able to set up a plan that will help you stay in the market uh, uh, forever, and that's what gives you the chance to to make money in the market. So again, start working on this. Um, get those emotions in check. And, and you know, I'll tell you, when you do get this going, trading may not be as exciting as it was before. Um, it'll start to get a little bit boring. But that's how professional traders. That's why when you when you when you talk to a great trader, um, they're not screaming about, oh man, I'm I'm the smartest guy in the world. I picked this stock and I made, you know, this you know, two two point four million dollars on this one trade over the over last week. And they're not talking like that because they would never take that risk to 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 make that amount. Or if they did, it was, if they are bragging about it, it's because they got lucky and, they, and they'll point that out. Boy, I got lucky on this and it paid off for me. Um, if it's, if, if, if you're finding that you're just getting so euphoric on your wins and so depressed on your losses, this is where the problem is. It's not the next trading program. It's not the next software program. It's not the next guru. It's dealing with your emotions. All right. Hopefully this was helpful. Uh, I know it was a little bit more abstract what we're talking about today. I didn't have a lot to really show you on the screen. Um, but this is such a key part. And like I said, I've been doing this a long time. I've been consulting people a long time. And this is usually the last step that, that people have to learn to break through and become consistent, profitable traders. And um, so it could be possibly the most valuable thing valuable training that you learn uh, throughout the course is uh, all these different trainings I do um, could make the biggest difference down the road. All right. Thanks, everyone. Have a great week. Uh, great weekend. We'll see you on Tuesday for the next uh, market update. Bye now.